Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. You're joining me, Bella Rose, as I dive deep into the beauty, power, and truths about intimacy. Learn not only the practicals, but the heart behind what making love is all about. Delight your marriage. Hi there. I'm so excited to have you listening to today's episode. And essentially, we have a lot of um, people who are married, married for many years, um, come through our doors and we get to work with and serve. And it's it's incredible to witness these marriages change. But so many times we hear from these people who have been married for so long saying, I wish I knew this at year one. I, I never had to suffer in these ways, or my wife didn't have to suffer, or my husband didn't have to suffer, or our kids didn't have to suffer. If I had only known these things before we got married. And so the way that we're set up is to serve people who are already married. That's the assumption when people come in. However, some people have um, said, hey, listen, I need this understanding before we ever get there. And today's episode are two ladies who made that choice and they were courageous and they said, I need insight around intimacy, around marriage, around properly doing this thing, um, setting up our journey to be successful. Because obviously intimacy is a huge part of marriage. I mean, it's the only thing that separates you from a, a really great friendship roommate situation, right? is sexual intimacy, is the physical affection that happens between a husband and a wife. And so that's what I want you to hear in this story. If if you know somebody who's engaged or somebody, um, maybe you are engaged and you're like, I don't, I don't really know how to do this thing well, uh, at least this area of marriage, I encourage you and invite you to get on a clarity call with a clarity advisor to walk through your story and to get deep into the weeds of what things have gone on in your life and how we might be able to serve you and help you through that. So I'm excited to share these two stories with you. Um, and again, if as all the transformation stories that we um, get to share and get to hear on the episode, I hope that it gives you hope that things can change even for you. You are not broken. You haven't failed because of what happened to you or the anxiety, the nervousness you feel around sex. You're not broken. It's not over for you. You can have a healthy, vibrant, wonderful, intimate marriage. It's just going to take a process and you just gently take a step forward and you just don't give up. You can be gentle with yourself, but don't stop the growing process. Okay, just one step. You can do it. I believe in you. All right. God is the God of of second chances. He's the God of growth. He loves when we are moved to repentance. He loves when we are motivated to change. I mean, he always is wanting us to be perfected and become more like him, more whole. So we can give and do more for the kingdom. So let's dive into these two stories. Andrea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yes. So let's see. Can you start off just telling a little bit about yourself and um, yeah, just a little bit of background about you? Um, I got married a little over three months ago and I started listening to your podcast probably last year, or maybe even the year before during the pandemic here or there. And in the relationship with my then fiance, um, there was already a little bit of tension of his expectations of what he thought our sex life would be and me not realistically just not knowing what that would look like, you know, as both of us were virgins and in our early 30s. Um, so I think that it already created this tension pre-marriage. Wow. So, I joined the program about six months ago, three months before I got married, thinking I really want to get this right and make progress before we actually enter into marriage. So I've now been in the program for six months, half out of marriage, half in marriage. So that's kind of the basis of where my story overlays with getting this information in my hands. 
Oh, that is just amazing. Wow. Okay. So what was it? Um, what was it like coming into? Yeah. What was it like coming into the program? It was really refreshing. I I have a lot of friends that have been married and they're very open with me, but I think that there's kind of this, everybody wants to respect their spouse. So maybe talking about the real in parts of marriage, um, still existed in my friendships, but not to the extent. So I remember my first group and just the things that the women were sharing and the vulnerability, it, it was really, uh, I guess, surprising. And it, it was refreshing. That would be the best word to be like, oh, there are married women and, and they have been married for 30, 40 years. And they are still, they're struggling with some of the things that I'm struggling with and to see, okay, what are they learning? How are they rewriting this? And how can I start, you know, earlier because I have access to this resource and then just appreciating that space because that allows you to show up and tell your story without feeling you have to guard anything. Um, So that, I think the group is just the best example of, um, I don't know, getting to feel super safe in this environment and ask any questions. And um, our group leader is wonderful and she listens to everybody super well. And she would even offer me some tangible ideas um, all the time that I could take with me and just remember like, oh, this is a great example. For example, she said, if you're arguing and to hold that person's wrist and just say same team. So it's kind of like it calms you mm. down. And and I've even shared that with friends who like it. So to see how it's kind of spread out um, and then doing the coursework as well. I've been slower through that, but it's given me some real tangible things that I can focus on and how I treat my husband. And so I think the best part pre-marriage was just for me really normalizing sex as somebody who grew up in the church and with a mom who told me not to have sex till I got married. That's all I kind of knew. And um, even though I was more familiar to an extent, it was like, how do how do I transition this to be this really wonderful, beautiful thing when it still kind of feels tied to something that's naughty and dirty, even if my brain says this is supposed to be good. So I think having women talk about in, in the, in the weekly calls and then doing the, um, the coursework to really rewrite those wires in my brain of how good this is and God designed. So when my husband would grab me to not kind of shy away, um, so I think that that is one of the most tangible things that I I learned pre-marriage and as well to um, maybe some other things is like I had never thought about lingerie or am I going to wear lingerie and you get it at your your bachelorette party. But I was like, yeah, I, I even bought it before that, the first one, and I showed it to him to get him excited and that stuff that Andrea before that I would just, I didn't know, I don't know what you do. And I would have been more awkward. And I don't think I would have stepped into it with confidence going, he likes this and this is good and it's exciting. So um, that was, I guess, also going pre-marriage to kind of buy the lingerie, show it to him, get it, get him excited, say little things. And really, like I said, reroute my idea of what sex is and how necessary and beautiful and good it is. And then after as well to to continue on that journey of learning and pursuing him in that. And it's still, you know, it's it's a difficult (laughs) new thing. And I'm I'm sure it will be for a while, but I have resources and people as I expand in this brand new aspect of my life. Oh my gosh, Andrea, that is just amazing. Well, bravo to you. That takes a lot of courage, you know, especially. Yeah. So many, so many of us, and it sounds like you as well, just were kind of like, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Silence. Like that's, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. kind of all we get. Just don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. So the transition to marriage around intimacy with you and your husband. Um, yeah. What, what do you think? Maybe what do you think are the differences? Like, had you not gone through delighted wife, like what, uh, what do you think you, your relationship would be like without it? I think I would still be struggling with just feeling maybe wrong about intimacy and pursuing him. I think I 
I'm still awkward, but I would have been even more awkward and harder to kind of break down those walls. So it really, like I said, just started to rewrite the um, the thoughts that I had. And I think it, it just would have been more maybe disappointing for him. I think for guys, it's easier to transition into that. And then it also, you know, in getting advice in the weekly calls and other thing, it helped it's it's given me more language to maybe express to him where I'm struggling, why I'm struggling, but how I want to change. And yep. so I think being able to have, uh, being more eager to pursue him, having, um, being more comfortable to pursue him with other sort in uh, things like lingerie per se, or being fun with it. Um, and having the words to express when I'm, how I'm still struggling or why I'm still struggling have been great resources. So without that, I think it would have just been more stress and discomfort and me still defending, like, I don't know if this is right, or it's okay if I don't want to do this and kind of, um, being more stubborn and putting my feet in the ground instead of trying to stop my thoughts about those things, um, and step into it excitedly, you know, and it's still, like I said, a learning process. So I think I just would have been many miles behind where I am and I still have many miles to go, but that's why I'm glad I have this to continue to work with it. It doesn't feel like a one and done at, at this point. It's like uh, something that I like having in my pocket as, you know, we're still very fresh <laughs> into marriage and all of this. Wow. That is so amazing. So if, if a woman is listening and she, um, or watching, if, if she is, um, you know, really just a little lost coming into marriage, um, in a similar way that, uh, just starting out knowing that this is going to be an issue, maybe having some anxiety around it. Uh, do you have some advice for her? I think doing this program is going to be the the advice that I'd have would be to do it and that that's going to open up doors for you in your heart and in your mind. And it's going to be a resource that you can go to as well as like um, even just opening that to be able to be more comfortable to talk to your spouse or your fiance about these topics, because sometimes you don't even know what to say or or how to say it. And I think having uh, an atmosphere in this group and with this homework that it it just uh, it enables you to know how to speak about it um, outside of that and in a more loving way. So I think my advice, yeah, is is to do that. And I, and I hope that with this work, I think that it is making it but even in like I'm saying in my life as that person, I'm talking to my friends who are married and I've said things that has that have brought them or sparked something in them and they've been married several years and like, oh yeah, I've never thought of that or this or that. So it's like that's really cool that it spreads. And then friends who aren't married and to kind of talk about it as well, I think it opens up their mind because again, it's it's just such an unknown world. And there's there's only so much you can do in a way to prepare until you're actually in it. And this is one of the best things you could do, because other than that, you're just talking to friends. It's just not the same versus getting real knowledge, real work as you dive into marriage and or the start of your marriage. So. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> learning. I recommend learning, I suppose, <laughs> to get comfortable. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. What? Um, so you said that, I guess it was around the pandemic when you started listening to Delight Your Marriage? Yes. What were some of the things that you felt like in the podcast um, maybe were helpful? So if some, um, I'm just thinking about somebody who might, you know, maybe not be ready to take the step to get into a program. Like, were there certain things that you were just like, these are some, some elements that were just so helpful for me to think about or to be praying about or um, shifting perspectives on? I think that one of the first episodes I remember listening to, I was like walking on the beach during the pandemic and it was the one about what um, like men need from their wife and what wife needs from their man. Um, those three top qualities that I'm not going to be able to say, but at least like respect and admiration and all of that. 
Um, so that was just really helpful to kind of narrow some of those things in and then see yourself in the part of what maybe words that you could give to what you're desiring also as a woman in a relationship. Um, so that was something specifically. And then also just that, I think your podcast is so Christ centered. So it's like, I could send this to anybody, you know? And again, like I'm saying, I think in the Christian world, everybody still tiptoes around intimacy and sex. And I think you do it beautifully where you are being open, honest, and touching on the topic, but also always bringing it back to God and God's design. And it's really comforting for somebody who is maybe struggling with set your own sexuality when you grow up to not know what it is. Um, or anyway, again, just feeling really dirty about it in a lot of ways. And then you, you think one day when I'm married and I get to do this and you get there and you're like, wait, this isn't what I thought it would be. And this is like really hard and complicated. And there's so many layers to it. And so I think even seeing there's a podcast and that people desired that you're like, oh, there's so much more to this. So I think that with the podcast to just have the conversation open and normalized, but again, in such a beautifully Christ-centered way is really uh, necessary in this world of faith. Um, And then that are just being other tangible things, like I said, and I think you also just like other things that you cover can be carried over. Yeah. When you're not having sex with your partner, of course, and just how to treat them and how to love them and how important some of those things are um, and how good they are. I think because it's easy to defend our own ground of what we don't want to do or what feels wrong or something like that, but just really loving people well, and that it is good. Mm. I don't know if it's vague about some of that love, but, you know, I think as somebody say an an independent female and really giving of yourself and um, in an intimate way, even if that's not sex is, is how God designed, you know, all of us to a certain extent and just really reviving that, I guess, versus feeling like, uh, how do I engage in this when I'm just told not to do it before marriage and then after marriage and the shock of it. So it's, it's like dipping your toes into this is good. This is beautiful. And I need to pursue it. Mm. That's awesome. Oh, I just love that Andrea. Um, let's see what, um, so you mentioned there are some ladies that are like, 30 years married, 40 years married. What, um, what's that like? You know, that's a big range of, of, you know, people that are not married. How, how is it possible to relate to all these different women in these groups or in your group? I think in our group, everyone's just, I mean, great anyway. (laughs) Um, and I think as women, any, anybody can connect on these topics. And it, it was, like I said, that first group to say, oh, the things they're talking about is like, I'm just way earlier on in that story, but this isn't something that's so foreign for me, or I could see that in my parents' marriage or this. So everything is relatable as humans that you're still learning from it. And I think that they enjoy talking to me and, you know, everybody will give advice when I say something, or they'll even say I'm the same. So it's not, I'm not feeling, oh, because I'm, you know, three months into marriage that you don't consider what I have to say. I mean, we still have similarities as women or as believers or whatever it is. So there's, there isn't this gap in it. Um, and so I think it's just a beautiful space for it. It, it doesn't matter if you're an empty nester or you have young kids or you're like me, who's just starting out. I think it's just a great space. And like I said, it's so, it's such a great learning of what's going on with other people that people don't talk about, which is okay. I'm not saying that everybody needs to go out there and preach about their intimate life, but that's what I mean is that that is such like a sacred space of trust for people to talk. So you really are breaking down those walls. Um, and so I guess over generations or whatever your situation is, everybody is supportive, caring, you can trust them. And I think just as women, like you're still laughing or, or touching base on things that makes it fun. I I don't feel, um, by any means like out of place there. And it's more, it just helps even learning about certain things that might come up when you have young kids or this or that. So it's helpful for me in that aspect too. 
Oh, I just love that. I love your perspective of, of growing and learning and, and wanting to um, be around. And, and these are other Christian women. Is that right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everything and, you know, even prayer going on in that group or following up with people. Um, so it's, like I said, a very safe and faith centered world. And our leader, Allie, is just very sweet and wonderful. She's just, you know, she's very good at this job of of knowing how to listen so well to everybody and really remember your what's going on in your life and follow back up with you. So I think having that kind of accountability, but never a pushy, you didn't do this, you said you'd do it. It's just checking in on things and and how are things going and does anybody need prayer? So I think it's a really, it's just a great thing to have every week to go to. Wow. Oh, I was gonna that was my next question. I was like, how much do you love Allie? Isn't she she's amazing? perfect? She she's she's meant to be in that role. She's got it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I just love it. Um, so let me think, is there any kind of final things? Let's say you're you're somebody, let's pretend, that's listening to this, you know, three months before, uh, you know, I guess six months ago, before you ever um before you ever joined, like, what are some things that you really wish you could tell that person, what, whatever it may be about the program, but, but even just about intimacy, some, some kind of guidance or encouragement. Um, maybe just, I'd say, see it as a learning curve, um, have grace for yourself and for your spouse and seek resources like you're not alone. And that is with intimate friendships or this group, or even Bella, I also have your book and my husband saw it the other day for the first time it was on the shelf and he was smiling like a little kid. (laughs) Anyway, I I would say nobody's alone in this. And maybe it does feel you're about to get married and everybody asks you, aren't you so excited? Isn't it so great? And there's kind of this fairy tale to it. And it's like, yes, it's wonderful and beautiful. And it's also this big unknown territory. And you know, I'm, I'm having anxiety or hesitation, or we are already kind of arguing about what this might look like because he's afraid that I'm going to hold out. And I don't know, am I going to hold out? Do I hold out? When can I hold out? You know? So just, I think when you, you look for resources and talk to people and get out there, you can really, there's so much help. And especially just in other women, again, knowing you're not alone in some of those um, fears or stresses. So I guess going back, I'm, I'm glad I did the clarity call. It did feel a little like, what is this going to be? What is this? And just, you know, you can do the clarity call here and, and see what can be offered. And, and, um, even in that being told you're not alone. And I've heard this story. It, it helps know that like, it's okay that I'm not on cloud nine about everything and that we have some things to work through because we're sinful people. And, and this is a messy world for some Christians that have been told no, 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 no. And then now you do it. Um, so I would say just, yeah, before marriage, like it's okay that everything is in a fairy tale. Um, maybe I would, <laughs> I would say that and uh, look for ways to talk to people, get resources, um, to start to prepare your heart, uh, for that shift and your mind just, of where you really are going to need God, see God, and just the beauty of being refined in a marriage like that is so necessary and so good. And it kind of can help turn some of that anxiety to like, I welcome this challenge and I'm going to pursue to, do better with God's help. Amen. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Awesome. Any kind of final thoughts that you wanted to make sure that you leave um, the lady listening with either about um, if she's on the fence, maybe, maybe, maybe there is some anxiety of joining a clarity call or some concern or any of that. um, If you wanted to mention. I would say as far as with this program, like that nobody's pushing you to say or do anything. So if you're curious, um, maybe just continue to listen to the podcast. You're going to get great resources doing that in your own privacy, but that this isn't a group where anybody is pushing you to be out of your comfort zone. It is available there and you can be exposed to it, hearing other people's story, doing the 
um, the coursework on your own and in your own privacy. And when you're ready to engage further, it's there for you, but that there's like a safety to be at your own pace, which I think is really helpful. And to, um, you don't have to lay it. This group isn't like now lay out all your secrets and your deepest fears, but you have the space to talk about those things. And, um, I don't think that you'll regret doing it if you're in similar shoes as I was. And even being told for me that I was the first one to do this, it was like, it still feels, this feels like something I need to do. So, and I'm very thankful I have. That's awesome. That's true. You, you were the first lady to do it before being married, right? Yeah. Ali said I'm the first DYM marriage. (laughs) Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. I I do remember one, but it might've been like weeks before or like a week before she was married or something like that, but, but months before. And then also, um, there's at least been a couple since you've gone through or I don't know. I think she said there's been a few, one who just got married and then like a newlywed who's considering, but they didn't know. And you had recorded a little video that they sent to me because there was nothing. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I remember. Oh, that's just so cool because it's true. I mean, that's the thing. And I'm maybe you've heard this from other ladies as well, since you've been in here for a while, but you know, I've just heard so many times from people like, I just wish I knew this before getting married. I just yeah. wish. And I do know, and it doesn't mean everything's like I have everything ready to go, but I'm, I'm, there is so much better and so much, you know, there's stepping stones here. And that's why it's like, just to keep on, keep it on. Um, so, and you know, not everybody maybe has it as hard as, <laughs> as I do too, but this really has been a point of tension and um, figuring it out slowly, but surely, but yeah. Awesome. And Allie is great. (laughs) She is great. Just love her. Oh, man. Um, And funny enough, her husband's actually on. Did you know that he's on the men's side? So, And I told my husband to do the free course coming up. And he was a little hesitant when he got emailed the information. He's like, it wanted me to put in all this stuff. And I think guys just aren't as vulnerable and open. So I I keep like mentioning to him, I think it would be so helpful, but I also can't pressure him. You know, that's not, he doesn't want to be mothered. It's a big thing that, you know, that respect piece. So trying not to, but I really hope he does it. Yes. Well, and don't, he definitely doesn't have to put in any of the. Okay. if, if you want to plant that seed, he doesn't have to do any of that. It just so happens that it's pretty interactive and our team can actually reach out to him and it's, you know, it's free, but we do quite a lot of, uh, but yeah, there are definitely people who go through it and just consume the content. So if he prefers that, yeah, um, maybe I'll put that little bug in his ear again, as it gets closer to whatever it is, September, something. September 12th. That's right. That's right. Oh, uh, yay. Okay. Well, would you pray um, for this potential lady um, who may be, yeah, who may be praying about it in similar shoes that you were in? Yeah. Okay. God, I I bring anybody who's considering um, doing this program or who's just in on the the cuff of getting married and is feeling kind of anxious about the reality in the day-to-day and transitioning, you know, from having a bed that you sleep in alone and you control the temperature and the lighting and everything and just going um, to that position of, I love this person, but this is a big adjustment to share this space and even the spaces of my body. And I thank you for all the resources that are out there and even, you know, verses um, in the Bible that we can go to, to see how good and beautiful sex is in a marriage. Um, and I pray for those women with anxiety to, to um, feel your comfort in this and the goodness of it and how, what a beautiful, perfect designer you are and that this is of you um, and something that they are excited to pursue and engage with and just that they feel um, more excitement than nerves and uh, they feel comfortable to pursue conversations around this topic, Lord, and just that you provide any woman in those shoes with people around her to encourage her um, as she leads towards marriage and as she starts out in marriage uh, to be heard 
in anything that she's experiencing and that she would, again, just feel comforted by the Holy Spirit and seek you and everything that she does with you and and with her spouse, um, that they would be able to seek you together, knowing that you are you are there and uh, you are good and that this is a beautiful opportunity, marriage to um, reflect your your glory. And, um, so I, I, I thank you for these opportunities, these resources, these conversations, and I pray that you just yeah speak to anybody who is feeling any of those stresses um, as they pursue or get closer to their married day. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. This was just awesome. Yeah. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> Well, Trinity, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, could you just start us off by telling a little bit about yourself and your situation? Yeah. So I am engaged to be married. Uh, I'm going to be getting married next spring in May at some point. We don't have a date yet, but it's coming. So I started um, DYM at kind of premarital. Um. My fiance is an ordained priest, pastor. So yeah, we're going to be entering the ministry. Um, So I just really have felt called to work on myself and some of my stuff before we enter a marriage. And so um, this was part of it for me and what God is calling me to do at this season. So yeah. That's amazing. I love that because it's, you know, Mm -hmm. ministry, that's the hardest kind of like the hardest thing to go into <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to lead others and yeah. to have a mm-hmm. good marriage yourself. I, I think that's so wise. Mm-hmm. I'm also a licensed counselor. Um, so yeah, I work for um, a company in um, Christian counseling. So I do that as well. So yeah. That's so great. Wow. Okay. Well, you are the perfect person to talk to about this. Um, <laughs> For lots of reasons. So how long have you been in the program? So I'm going on my third month. So I'm getting close to the 90 day uh, mark. And I started back in July. Um, Yeah, with Allie and her group. It's been great. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What is what? um, Well, tell me first, maybe before I jump into that, what led you to deciding you needed some help? Yeah. So, um, and just a b- brief background, I grew up in, um, a church background that was a little more legalistic and fundamental with like holiness type, um, philosophies and ideas. So the, I never really talked about sex or never really got to talk about intimacy. And I really developed a fear-based approach and anxiety around intimacy and intercourse and just all of that. And so um, I really felt like I needed some help on working through desires and sex and, you know, how that's going to be for me once I do get married. Um, There was a point in my life where I actually thought like I may not actually be able to have sex because I felt so like anxious and, you know, I wanted to have family, wanted to, you know, be there for my husband, those kind of things. Um, so that's kind of what has led me. I had, um, someone who referred me to this program and started listening to podcasts and different things. And it's been very helpful. (laughs) That's amazing. Wow. To have, I mean, to have that level of anxiety must've been really tough. Yeah. And just, you know, God has really bring, been bringing me healing. And I, I can say now, like, I believe I'm going to be able to have sex and marriage and have children and love my husband well, you know. Um, I think one of the hangups for me was um, just this belief that the husband's trying to get something from the wife when reality, like listening to your work has helped me to shift my mindset to like 
he craves it and loves it and wants it and he needs it. And like, it's a way for me to love him. And so like that shift has helped me change my whole perspective on like, okay, wow. Like when I'm in marriage, I'm going to be focusing on giving to him and he needs that. And that's been really helpful. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. What, um, what in the program, how have you felt inside the program? Would you say? Oh, I love it. Like, I love the modules. I've been so helpful. I love the worthiness meditation, the forgiveness meditation, the, um, you know, just learn, even in doing the intimate freedom section has helped me like being exposed to those conversations. I have to kind of face the anxiousness and it helps me to like, um, the sensitive, like hypersensitivity, like starts to drop as you expose yourself more to even those conversations. Yeah. So that's been helpful. <laughs> I mean, that must have been really a brave step for you to say, okay, I'm super anxious about this. So I'm going to take a course all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I was just like, okay, God, like, <laughs> well, cause I knew I was like, okay, like, either now or like when we get married, like, and I really like love my fiance so much. And like, I want to be able to give to him and love him. And I know a lot of it, like with some of my thinking and beliefs and just my own anxiousness. So like, this has helped me to do my part for that. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. What, what does he think about it all? He loves it. Like he thinks he's so supportive. Um, He actually is signed up to do the free course, um, the um, uh, September 12th or something. Yep. So yeah, since I've started doing it, he, he was like looking into that. So that's really neat. Um, He's very supportive. I, you know, share some things with him about it. And he's just like the podcast, like, you know, we listened to a couple of those and yeah. So He's all about it. Wow. Wow. And so, um, what are some of the things that you appreciate about the the group? The group. It's just so great to hear other people's stories and just be able to empathize with each other and like connect in that way and know that like there's other people going through similar things and, um, you get little tidbits from different people and I like, I'm writing notes down and like, Oh, like so-and-so said this. And like, that connects to me. And like, um, yeah. And just being able to pray for each other and have like this Slack messengers to message each other for the week. Yeah. It's, it's been so fun. And like the people, the women, like really, we care for each other and we pray for each other, like outside the group and yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear. That is yeah. so great, Trinity. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Have you seen like other marriages change or um, changes yeah. for other ladies as well? Definitely. I mean, there's even just this morning, women coming in and sharing testimonies like this happened and that happened. And, you know, God's working in my husband this way. And, um, and then I, what I really love is that people are so humble and admitting their own weaknesses and be like, this is where I need to change. And like, it creates a space of safety. It's like non-judgmental and everyone's open and honest with like, um, looking at themselves, examining their own heart, you know? And like, I want to be able to be like that. And all the other ladies are like that. And it's so, you don't find that too many places where people are so real and like, okay, I need to change this about me. And like, then I'm praying for my husband that God will change him. And then through the praying, then they're seeing their husbands start to change, you know, it's like, I didn't have to do anything to control him. It just like starts to happen. It's, it's really cool. Wow. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. So I really think it's been setting me up to start from a good place, um, when I get married and just the tools have helped me so much. (laughs) Wow. Oh, that's so great. 
Yeah, and I love how like we I can go back to the modules later because there's a few places with some of the sexy things that I'm like, okay, maybe I should come back to that after I'm actually married (laughs) because I'm not quite married yet. But um, like I can go back and actually like, oh, I was like, okay, I could come back to that and like really use that when the time comes. So, right, I love that part too. (laughs) Wow, wow, what um. Did you have hesitations before coming into the program that you feel like Hmm. maybe you want to speak to now being on the other side? Hesitations. I think, well, I I mean, I was coming in as an overly anxious type of person already. Um, So I think maybe just will there be different like opinions or different, like if there's something I don't necessarily agree with, but like. I have really taken so much from what people have had to say. And, you know, you recognize that like, if you don't necessarily agree with every little 100% thing, like it's okay. We're all different. We're at different places, you know? So yeah, that was probably the one thing, but that's with anything. My, my uh, fiance, I can say fiance now. He always says, if I agree with everything in a book, I probably wrote it. So (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so you know it's okay yeah that's right that's right sometimes I think about like if if there was one person that I could follow in every single way I, they'd be Jesus <laughs> like yeah just reality so, that was probably my only hesitation but when we work things out with the Holy Spirit and prayer God directs us and the things that he wants in our soul will will really digest. So, yeah. That is so great. That is so great, Trinity. Wow. Well, do you have any other thoughts that you wanted to make sure you shared with Hmm. somebody listening? I think that if anyone else is considering premarital, like if you're not married yet, I think it could be really helpful. Um, ahead of time, you know, if anyone struggles with anxiety or anxiousness, um, it just helps to be exposed to these conversations and to start to think through different perspectives. So yeah, I would love to see more women who are like not quite married yet in the premarital stage do this program. Yeah. That's That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I so frequently hear from people who've been married, oh my gosh, decades. And they're like, if only I had known this, you're one. So I just commend you like <laughs> wisdom to to get these things figured out early because they're, I mean, it's foundational to marriage. So yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So I just thank you so much. Like even listening to podcasts, like I'm really grateful. So yeah. That's awesome. Oh, you're so welcome. Can I ask you about that actually? Because yeah, of course. sometimes I have some people that they'll listen to podcasts and they're really blessed by it, but because they're so blessed by the podcast, they're kind of like, I don't really need a program. And I'm curious what you think about oh. that. Um, well, with the podcast, you don't get the group, you don't get the, like the, the woman's group, which I think is so vital because you're working with real life people like a support group you know and I think that's really what I needed the most is having people to talk to but also like there's info you get in the modules that you can't get in the podcasts like and you walk through it step by step so like my first modules like it each week it opens up a new module so you really can't race through it like you have to work through it and that allows you time to really soak it in because I find for myself if I race through something I don't digest as much as I could so it's helpful to have the um like the schedule yeah yeah that's great yeah that's great trinity well yeah. I, you know often I I ask someone um if you'd be willing to pray for the person listening, um, maybe she's at a similar spot of anxiety, you know, she might be getting married soon or eventually, and she's just really nervous. Would you be willing to pray for her? 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, just I thank you and praise you so much for Bella and the Delight Your Marriage program, God. It's just been such a oh, God sent for me. And I just pray if there's any woman listening to this that is struggling with anxiety or is premarital or even in marriage and is struggling with anxiety, God, that you will just open up her heart and help her to be open to where you're leading her. And God, help her to trust, to not self-protect, but to just trust that you have good things for her. So I pray that you'll speak directly to her heart and um, lead her in this direction if it's it's your will and your plan for her life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Trinity. Yeah. Wonderful. This was amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm I hope my story can help other people. So Thank you Andrea and Trinity. That was awesome. And it and it takes a lot to share your story, so I really appreciate it. If you are in a similar spot, as these ladies, I invite you to get on a clarity call and just discover if our community and and what we offer and our program is the right fit for you and could possibly get you set up in the right path towards marriage. Um, Whether you're a couple months out or you're in it or you just got engaged, um, at this point in the work, we've we've got quite a few ladies in that situation. And yes, you need to, you know, make sure you, you don't get, um, started on some of those practicals, but, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity to learn and grow and set yourself up well for a really successful marriage and intimacy in it. So if you are interested, go to delightyourmarriage.com slash CC for a clarity call. And yeah, I just want to bless you and encourage you today. Thank you for listening in. And I hope and pray that this would, um, just give you a little insight into some things that maybe have gone on in your heart, um, whatever stage of life you're in. God bless you and wishing you a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.